Alright guys, how's it going? This is WWE Movie Maker making my next video, my next podcast. Um, as you know, I've, I have said this in my other videos that I won't be able to make pre-Monday Night Raw shows and pre-Smackdown shows. I'm still getting a, sort of set on this channel right now. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine both those things. I'm going to combine a, uh, a pre-show and uh, some news on this uh, video and um, tomorrow's I'm going to be talking about the post Monday Night Raw show and then the Smackdown pre-show I'm going to combine it into one so I'm not really going to call it a pre-show or a post show I'm just going to call it a review or something you know I tried to make it uh, something different than other channels but again schedule wise uh, things just don't work out at times so I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to combine both those things together and hopefully I can jam pack about 20-30 minutes in together um, again uh, this week is probably one of the most important weeks um, SummerSlam week and weekend just like Wrestlemania week and weekend so there's a lot of news going around and we'll be getting uh, straight into it and talking about it right now so as you as you all know Monday Night Raw is tonight and there's been uh, some of the things, some of the focus points people have been talking about, some of the points to focus on for tonight. Brock Lesnar to address the Viper. So, Randy Orton is going to be here tonight. Uh, well, actually, that's not... <laughs> my bad. I, I still got used to this uh, brand split. Randy Orton, because he did invade Raw Boat, I believe, it was two weeks ago. I don't know if we'll see him tonight. But we will see um, Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar will address the situation in hand, Paul Heyman will, and Randy Orton will most likely address the situation on SmackDown. I don't think they're going to try to do the invasion again, they already did it twice. Um, so be, be, be looking forward to Paul Heyman and his speech, or whatever he's going to be able to say, it's always entertaining. Roman Reigns, can he spoil Rusev's night again? So last week we saw Roman Reigns spear Rusev to end the show, you know, he was laying down on the ground walking back, that, that, that picture, that's, that, uh, that moment right there was the way to end off Monday Night Raw. Um, what can happen tonight? You might want to tune in to check that out as well. A lot of people are saying this is the the one of the matches that aren't uh, that won't won't be as important. Um, but I can guarantee you these guys, like looking on the paper, these guys can wrestle good, you know, um, and they've had good chemistry in the past. So I think it'll be a decent wrestling match. You know, Seth Rollins to to deconstruct the Demon King. So last week Finn Balor was not on Raw. It was a very, very, it was a grave, huge mistake by WWE not doing that. They needed Balor on there. Uh, they don't even have Sami Zayn on the card. You know, I just realized that. I'm like, where the hell is Sami Zayn, right? Um, and now that they're both drafted to Monday Night Raw, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they're both drafted to Monday Night Raw. People are saying that they might switch Zayn over to SmackDown or have Cesaro. Cesaro might also be going to SmackDown, by the way, because again, they're not happy with the uh, with the rosters at this point. They should have thought about that before they actually did the brand split. But again, Finn Balor was not on Raw last week. Sami Zayn was not on Raw last week. Maybe there might not be enough space for them. So if you move someone down, you can have Sami Zayn, or you can have those other guys, uh, you know, fall on SmackDown. That's what they said, the land of opportunity, because now you have superstars that don't necessarily get all the time on Raw, and people never watch SmackDown. Now that SmackDown's live, and it's a competition, there'll be more viewers for sure, and you get your pay, you get your money, and, and you'll still be performing at, um, major pay-per-views and your own exclusive pay-per-views so Finn Balor expect expect these two to confront each other tonight how will the New Day retaliate against Gallows and Anderson um okay Big E I don't know if Big E will be on uh, Monday Night Raw tonight um it just might be Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus the club in that case it might not be as entertaining I mean you need you need Big E man like this guy this guy's part of this uh, the New Day um you know, it, it could turn out something like last year. The New Day won it last year. The New Day could lose it this year. They, they've held it for one full year. If you really want to put some steam on the club, it's possible to do that. Um, I think... Uh, I'm not sure if uh, the, the New Day are the longest reigning tag team champs uh, as of now. Uh, I, I really don't know. Um, but we can see what happens at SummerSlam. Do the cheaters like Titus O'Neil and Darren Young pr prosper? Seriously, if this is uh, this is probably a pre-show match, I'm telling you. Um, I don't see anything other than this being a pre-show match. Every other title match is going to be on um, the the main show. Um, as for Apollo Crews and The Miz, it's an inter it's an IC title match. I swear to God, I haven't seen any build for that. Like it's it, there might have been build, but like I don't remember it, you know. So I don't know, but it'll still be a good match. Um, you know, if the Usos are out. 
they're not really going to be fighting at a uh, SummerSlam, you know. It, the rosters look thin, you know. And even for a, a combined pay-per-view with both rosters, you know, I'm just wondering how the hell they're going to do this when it's just exclusive pay-per-views because they're doing it three hours each, right? Uh, unless they unless they do the exclusive pay-per-views, probably if you do two hours, I think that's enough for exclusive pay-per-views. For other for for combined pay-per-views, yeah, do three hours, right? But you don't need you don't need like that much, seriously. And Charlotte goes solo, so Charlotte and Sasha Banks will be a one-on-one -on -one match. I'm going to call it right now. I don't know if they'll put a stipulation on this. Um, I really hope they do. So you can be looking for that tonight. Um, if they do add a stipulation with this match, because they deserve it, you know, like th they could possibly steal the show, and and uh, it could it, it, it could be impactful. It's it's what it's what WWE needs. They need these women to start stealing the show nowadays because they just can. You know, people have said it themselves. The women do their job better than the men can do. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. That's the news for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, uh, Rusev, Charlotte, New Day, Seth Rollins, Demon Bauer, Demon King, whatever. They're all here tonight. Be looking forward for them. Be looking forward to them showing up tonight as we move on to other news we have criticism over the wwe universal championship so again this sunday is SummerSlam, and you know uh the f the wwe has set the stage for four marquee matches at this sunday SummerSlam, any of which could headline the show though there's yet to be an announcement as to which match will actually be the main event Cena's and Styles won't probably close the night, but the compelling storyline certainly provides an argument. Ambrose and Ziggler might not have even sniffed the conversation, but they're, co they're, they're competing for the incumbent WWE World Championship, which elevates their feud considerably. Orton and uh, Brock Lesnar face off in a match billed as 15 years in the making, and then there's the match that few even saw conceivable as recently as a month ago. Finn Balor made his debut and now uh, finds himself uh, in this program facing Seth Rollins for the Ch Universal Championship. Second biggest pay-per-view of this year. So, if you think about it, um, it doesn't seem that uh, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, they most likely will not be main eventing. Um, it is for the Universal Championship. Um, it doesn't seem like they're going to be main eventing only because, you know, they they will obviously put on a show. Um, it doesn't look like John Cena and AJ Styles. They faced many times before. They won't probably be main eventing. Uh, Ambrose and Ziggler, they are fighting for the championship. But as we've seen in the past, that always hasn't main evented. I think it's going to go like this. I think AJ Styles and John Cena um, will most likely be one of the earlier matches that'll happen and it'll probably follow up with a Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor and then that will probably follow up with an Ambrose and Ziggler and then to end it off you could possibly have uh, Brock Lesnar Orton I think it's I think it's really easy it's logical they will face off in the main event I mean that's the biggest match of this card it was announced before any other match for SummerSlam like, it was announced, what was it, like, uh, I remember, in the early July, you know, and just before uh, UFC 200. So, this match is obviously the main event. Um, people have said before, the WWE Championship deserves to be the main event. WWE Championships on SmackDown, Universal Championships on Raw, none of them are going to main event at this point. It's the biggest match of the summer, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton. Um... The WWE World Title is the biggest uh, the championship in the biz in the company in the business. And last year it was Seth Rollins and John Cena who were facing off for the U.S. Title and WWE Title, and that was second uh, just before, I believe, uh, yeah, just before the main event. Uh, there might have been another match or so, but that match is going to be uh, the co-main event, if you want to call it. Uh, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, it'll be near the end for sure, but Cena and Styles might be near the beginning. They might switch the first two, but the WWE title and the main event, Rainier and Brock Lesnar, they're going to be the co-main event and the main event, unless they decide to change it. Um, I, I'm just, this is my opinion, because from the titles they're fighting for, that's how I'm booking them. That's how I'm putting them into place, uh, according to the titles they're fighting for. So... A week prior, Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley made Rollins and Roman Reigns the first and sixth picks respectively in the WWE draft. Those two went to Raw while Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, and SmackDown Live made Ambrose the second overall pick. 
When Ambrose beat Rollins and Reigns in the main event at Battleground five days later, the WWE Championship went with him on Tuesday nights to SmackDown, and Raw was left without a top title. They created the Universal Championship. Again, it's saying that reports will most likely have the WWE Universal Championship uh, to be red, the background of the color red, and then the world title will be blue to represent SmackDown, because as of now, it seems as SmackDown will keep the championship until the next year's draft. Um, you know, the flagship show had the uh, women's championship, the tag team championships, US championship, while the blue brand possessed the world championship and the intercontinental championship. So the difference between the two brands was that Raw was in a hurry to create a new world title. SmackDown was in no rush to even things up by adding tag team or w women's gold because they had the world title on the, on the, uh, on the scene right there. You know, and you know, I I understand why we can't take Ziggler and Ambrose seriously at this point because they're they haven't been, uh, they're they're just not main event guys. You know, they haven't been in that situation as of late. If you were to put half the guys on Raw and switch it to SmackDown, you'd feel a little bit more different. But again, the the vibe is still there that it's still a B show. You know, in fact, Daniel Bryan uh, simultaneously defended SmackDown's plan and criticized Raw decision to multiply to mu in multiple interviews, including WWE produced. Talking Smack, a recap show with a general manager immediately following SmackDown Live every Tuesday night. Brian, and, uh, Brian said that Raw was too hasty in creating the new WWE Universal Championship and joking, jokingly said he'll take his time in introducing SmackDown's new Inner Species or, or Milky Way Championships. So, to be fair, a world title is most important to Raw than a women's championship or tag team titles are to SmackDown at the moment. The blue brand is considered inferior in those divisions coming out of the WWE draft and will need to work on building up new stars before introducing championships. It is worth noting that the belts are on their way. It's just a matter of when they will arrive on television. It could be within the next month, um, maybe after SummerSlam. Um, probably, I believe, the first exclusive SmackDown and Raw pay-per-view. The first exclusive SmackDown pay-per-view, that's, uh, I believe, it's September the 11th. It's a it's Backlash. Um, they will probably show or uh, introduce a new championship or new titles probably before then because, you know, they're, you're going to have superstars exclusive from that brand fighting. Um, as of now, SummerSlam is all jam-packed. You know, it is set up. Every match is worth watching for, you know. Um, and people can rare, rarely say that. Rarely, you know. Um, Joey Styles was released from WWE last week, with some believing it was a result of Styles' criticism of the company's decisions to name their new title the WWE Universal Championship, as well as Vince McMahon's infatuation with Roman Reigns. In regards to the Universal title, Styles basically said the same thing as Brian and what many others were thinking, but because it was an unsanctioned shoot-type interview, it didn't help his case. It was sort of a shoot-type interview, and it cost us career freaking I don't I really don't know what he said to be honest um, I don't think it was that bad I think he was just telling the truth and WWE doesn't like the truth at times because it can hurt I swear they teach you n to always tell the truth even though it hurts looks like WWE doesn't want their uh, being exposed at the point however according to daily wrestling news Brian and Styles weren't the only ones who have been cr uh, critical of the decision to name the new belt the Universal Championship there has been an internal criticism within WWE over the name of the title, which will be exclusive to Raw once the match between Rollins and Balor is over. So, again, rumors have been that the Universal title will be red, just like the WWE Championship. Everything is going to have the W sign on it, for sure. It's going to just look like the WWE title, except it's going to be red. And they're saying the World Heavyweight Championship is going to be blue for SmackDown. This just... It, you have a WWE Universal Championship, you have a WWE World Title. So you have a World Title and a Universal Title. You took, you, like the WWE Championship itself is now degraded, you know, because you just have two championships there. There isn't one main title. And at this point it makes sense. Because you have two brands, so you're going to have to have exclusive, exclusive uh, championships. To have one WWE World Title isn't going to help at all, because that's only going to be favoring one brand, because a certain person is going to win it to be on a certain and they're going to be on a certain brand they're not going to be on both brands so an exclusive title at this point it makes sense again this is this isn't this is a step in the right direction to make WWE or to make Raw and SmackDown more exclusive 
Um, you know, when they made their announcement, Foley and Stephanie McMahon declared that the new WWE Championship will be named after the WWE Universe, but even the moniker has rubbed people the wrong way. Yeah, this was this was not a good idea. WWE Universe. Um, it's been one of many buzz words used in the age of social media where a large portion of fans would rather just be called fans. So they'll call it the Fan Championship. Yeah, the Universal Championship. Um, people are saying they might want to change the name. Uh, it might take some time for us to get used to it. Um, and maybe when we do get used to it, we'll be fine with it. I mean, the looks might be... Uh, more intriguing than the name. We don't. We, There's not confirmed what the actual uh, appearance of the championship is going to be, but we'll have to wait. You know, the WWE has a penchant of changing their mind on the fly, as we've seen many times with Vince McMahon and what uh, even even what happened with the draft. <laughs> they they were drafting people like during like they were still trying to figure out who to draft where during uh, the second hour of the show. There you go. You know. Um, It'll be interesting to see if the names stick or the backlash causes them to causes them to rethink it. There's less than a week remaining before the first ever Universal Champion is crowned. Will it be Seth Rollins? Will it be Finn Balor? Um, to answer that question, by the way, um, I believe Finn Balor. Uh, I think Finn Balor should win this and should go all the way with this. And let's see what happens. Um, but unfortunately, this is also a tough situation. It's a controversial match because B Finn Balor, if he wins it all the way for a month, you know, now he has to get chased by Seth Rollins and since he's won it already it's like you know he's been pushed so fast people have an issue with that Seth Rollins on the other case is like um, I don't want to say this because he's not it but he's sort of the veteran in this match and he's not he's a still a young guy but um, he's more according to a lot of people they think Finn Balor is, the, is a young guy they're both veterans by the way they've both been here and Seth Rollins winning is more is more I guess usual or normal for people to think, yeah, Seth Rollins is going to win. If Balor takes the upset victory, and people are going to think it's an upset when it really isn't, Finn Balor just has has probably more experience than Seth Rollins at this. But um, you know, according to his size and stuff, people are going to think different. So they have criticism over the Universal Championship name. They don't know if to uh, call it that or to call it something else. People have issues with it. I, I don't blame them. It sounds like a freaking uh, Disneyland, Disney World sort of type name. You know, you should change it. Um, as we move on to other types of news, Bray Wyatt gives an update on his status of the Wyatt family. Um, so Bray Wyatt, so Bray Wyatt has talked about, you know, that uh, you know he seriously he hasn't truly received the belt at this point. Uh, but there's a theory that he, you know, he's over without a championship, so he doesn't really need one. You know, however, isn't that the reason why a person would want to become a professional wrestler? So. Bray Wyatt spoke with Austin Chronicle on the reason why he wanted to be a wrestler. If you have a voice like mine that I want to project and I want to hear, millions and millions of people watch this show every week. If you have a childhood dream to change the world, it's the perfect outlet. So, you know, in, Zwa in Wyatt's voice, that propels him to be the main event scene on SmackDown Live. That voice of his made him the superstar that he is today. Wyatt is an enigma that hasn't been seen in the WWE before. There are those in the WWE Universe who want to call him the next Undertaker. There are also differences between the two stars. Taker was not known for not losing at WrestleMania, while Wyatt lost to him at WWE uh, WrestleMania 31. So, there is one similarity between the two. You know, both of them have had a stable that had decent success. Undertaker was the leader of the Ministry of Darkness for a time, but Wyatt was still his, uh, with his Wyatt family, or at least that's what the WWE Universal believes. At the WWE Draft, Braun Strowman was drafted to WWE Raw, while Wyatt and Eric Rowan went to SmackDown Live. Either way, according to Wyatt himself, the Wyatt family isn't over yet. I always have someone with me. It's not just me or me uh, and Rowan, it's me and the Legion. It's a simple answer. If you have a voice like mine that I want to project and that I want to hear, millions and millions of people will watch the show every week. Again, if you have a childhood dream to change the world, it is the perfect outlet. As soon as Luke Harper is healthy, the, he presumably will go back to SmackDown Live to what, so that he can reunite with the Wyatt family. And he's dealing with a back knee, you know, one similar to what Seth Rollins had almost uh, over a year ago uh, on an overseas tour. He was an integral but underrated part of the Wyatt family. His talent is right on the part of Wyatt's as far as in-ring ability is concerned. So, you know, Wyatt will take out Orton at SummerSlam. 
He will make false promises and call out the Viper. They will have a match at the next pay-per-view and Orton will win. You know, the report goes, say, Bray Wyatt will feud with SummerSlam after SummerSlam is over. So, you know, it will most likely go down like it normally does. You know, uh, normally that's how feuds go with Wyatt, which infuriates his hardcore fans. When will he actually become or actually have a WWE Championship belt? So we'll see. People are saying he should interfere with Orton and Lesnar. Um... Uh, you know, this could be an interesting way of going about it. I mean, he has made a lot of uh, uh, promos, cutting promos about it. And, you know, people would say he should a actually attack Brock Lesnar. But again, Lesnar's on Raw. So Orton, uh, it would make sense in the fact that SmackDown and Raw. And I'd love to see Orton and uh, why brawl at it, go at it. Um, so we can, well, we'll see where that goes. Um, as for other interferences, I did mention this before on my other videos. The Balor Club could interfere in Seth Rollins and... Finn Balor match. Uh, Styles and Cena looks like that should win clean, and it also looks like Ambrose and Ziggler should also win clean. But the other two matches, it could be an interesting sight, if you ask me. As we move on, I'm not going to spend so much time on this, because I think this is, uh, I already know why they're doing this. Eva Marie expected to become SmackDown's first women's champion, so I'm not going to read any of the reports or anything. I'm going to tell you what my opinion on this, why they're going to do this. Pretty much because she has been trolling the WWE Universe. She has not fought the past two weeks. Uh, she did come out. She did come out two weeks ago, and she said said that you know um, she has an injury and she faked an injury and she's not able to fight that night. Then she comes out last week has a wardrobe malfunction again. All right, and this is again uh, another way to troll uh, the fans and uh, put a pause on her debut. Uh, against Becky Lynch. Um, but one more thing I have. Uh, I don't. I don't know if any of the women are going to be fighting at SummerSlam. Uh, the SmackDown women. I mean, Carmella and Natalia. They're not going to be fighting. Becky Lynch and I believe um, Eva Marie or even Alexa Bliss. These women are not going to be fighting at SummerSlam at this point because you know they're just their storylines are getting started and the the the, the card is already jam packed. Uh, we already have a women's title that is happening. Um, I don't know if we have a a women's match from SmackDown happening on uh, SummerSlam. They haven't introduced, they haven't said anything about that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. So, um, we can leave it at that, but Eva Marie will become, according to this, will become the first women's champion only because she can create more heat. It will be more heat on her, it will give her the perfect way of becoming a more, uh, I guess, a heel. And people will hate her. People genuinely hate her because she can't wrestle at all. Uh, according to Becky Lynch, that's not the case. If you watch my video that I posted yesterday, WWE news, uh, reports, rumors, controversy, all that stuff for uh, August 14, 2016, Becky Lynch said that she's a hard worker. Eva Marie she gets all that flack from uh, fans, but really that's not her. She can wrestle and she works hard for it. So that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but she's doing that to get heel heat. I, now, as for <laughs> defending it, I don't know if she'll be able to. I really wouldn't c want to see her as a women's champion, to be honest, um, for SmackDown. But if you want to bring real heat, the way WWE is doing it, it just may be the right way. According to some people, that can sting a little. Um, but I'm just telling you the truth. I, I, that, this is my opinion. Why they're going to be doing this? It's because of this. So as we get on to other, other news, um, Samoa Joe on WWE trusting him, facing Nakamura at TakeOver, and WWE trying new things. So, you know, WWE NXT uh, champion Samoa Joe recently spoke with Scott Fishman of Channel Guide Magazine to promote this weekend's NXT TakeOver Back to Brooklyn event. The full interview right here. TakeOver opponent Shinsuke Nakamura. He said, I think Nakamura's talent speaks for himself. I think it's a match that I've very uh, been looking forward to. Very much like Finn, I have a ton of history with Nakamura. I've seen him develop from being a, a New Japan green boy to being the superstar that he is today. And at no point during the development have we gotten in the ring and locked horns one-on-one. -on -one. So, it's something... I'm very looking forward to, and I think the fans in Brooklyn will not be disappointed. You're damn right they're not going to be disappointed. It's going to be one of the best matches on the card. One of the best matches of SummerSlam weekend. 
where WWE is at right now. So there's uh, reaching out to the industry as a whole and bringing in other people from other companies, just like the Cruiserweight Classic, and bringing in all these faces from around the world and who you would never expect to see, let alone featured in a running series on the network. It's a very exciting time because WWE is trying a lot of new and interesting things. To be here at this time, I think it's special to me because I'm a kind of, of a, I'm kind of in the middle and can see it all and watch it materialize right in front of me. Um, as he talks about WWE trusting his abilities, allowing him to flourish, do what he can, do what he wants to do in order to uh, expand on his character a bit more. It was really WWE kind uh, of taking their hands off and letting me do what I do. They kind of gave me the reins to be Samoa Joe and do what I needed to do. They let me keep my m moniker. I think the biggest thing is that they respected me and my artistic integrity. It has been very welcome to see while working for WWE. The majority of my career you see people released or on their way out of the company saying various horror stories about what uh, things have happened to them here or how things are and how they uh, run. So my expectations were pretty low. But being a part of a company has far exceeded my expectations. It has been a blast the entire time I've worked here. I'm not one to grumble and complain much but I have to admit it has been refreshing just being a part of the company and being part of the NXT brand well Samoa Joe we're certainly glad to have you here and we hope you don't leave anytime soon so that is Samoa Joe ladies and gentlemen uh, he has been making an impact again you better uh, check out NXT TakeOver because if you don't want to see SummerSlam you know I, I wouldn't I, I would ask you why you wouldn't want to see SummerSlam I mean there are all types of matches, popularity matches, wrestling matches, all those kinds of matches that are going to be happening at SummerSlam, but you cannot miss TakeOver at all. Samoa Joe Nakamura could be another candidate for the match of the year. Um, that's that. So before I end off this sort of um, video about WWE and uh, Raw, SmackDown, and all the stuff that's happening on, by the way, I did post uh, on my other video uh, just two days ago about not two days ago, about three days ago, um, the matches that are going to be happening on SmackDown, John Cena versus Del Rio is confirmed, uh, The Miz will also be having Ambrose and Ziggler on his highlight reel, so to uh, bump up and move up all these, uh, expand on the build for sure, and um, uh, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose and Alberto Del Rio and uh, John Cena. It feels like Del Rio has just been that guy that is there, a jobber to these guys, and just helping them get out of their ring rust or you know having them fight just before they go to SummerSlam. Um, and it's not so much ring rust; it's just to get you ready, I guess. And it's fine, you know. That's what you need. Um, so according to Forbes.com, a lot of people don't like this website, but uh, AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose and five other WWE feuds that should happen after SummerSlam. What are some other feuds that should happen after SummerSlam? Well, Enzo Amore and Big Cass versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. So according to Biggie's current storyline injury, you know, we don't know if the New Day will drop their tag team titles. If they do, going against Gallows and Anderson, uh, Gallows and Anderson could win Enzo and Cass. It would be an amazing feud. Um, a lot of people wanted Enzo and Cass and the New Day. Um, but I think going the way they are, um, they might try new different things. Seth Rollins versus Sami Zayn. We've seen these guys have amazing chemistry before. We've seen these guys fight on Raw before. They could possibly have another feud. Maybe that's what they're keeping Sami Zayn for. Maybe they're not letting Sami Zayn do anything yet because maybe he's going to somehow get involved. Maybe not exactly involved, but maybe Seth Rollins does lose the championship. Now, the thing is that this is a fresh feud, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. They're not going to end the feud off. They're going to continue it on throughout the remainder of this year, and next year Finn Balor will get a new com uh, competitor or a, uh, or a new, some new type of competition at the Royal Rumble. Um, Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn, as of now, I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens. Okay, I'm going to read this. Neither Owens or Jericho should face turn, obviously, should turn face, but that doesn't mean that their current unofficial partnership can lead into a rivalry between the two. It's rather obvious that their current angle in which they're feuding with Amore and Big Cass is being done more to give Enzo Amore and Big Cass a substantial storyline than it is to establish anything long-term with Jericho and Owens. Likewise, it's also pretty clear that, like what we saw between Jericho and Styles earlier this year, Owens and Jericho are headed for a split sooner rather than later. You can easily see that. I mean, seriously, Owen's tactics are screwing other people. You think he's not going to screw Jericho over? The best bet 
is that some sort of mistake happens at SummerSlam that costs Owens and Jericho their match against Enzo and Cass, igniting a tension between the two that ultimately leads to a feud, one in which having a babyface isn't necessary. Owens and Jericho are two outstanding heel performers who are beloved and appreciated by the crowd, so if anyone can make a heel heel feud work, it's them. Yeah, you're damn right it can. But I did hear reports that Jericho is going to be leaving pretty much after SummerSlam. He might be leaving soon. Um, we'll see how that works out. I just said this, and it looks like Forbes is also saying this. Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. So maybe they do. Maybe Bray Wyatt does interfere in Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton's match at SummerSlam. We'll all be looking forward to that. We'll be all be looking uh, to see what happens in that match. AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose is the next one. This is the way they should have gone with it, going into SummerSlam. But apparently, WWE wanted to end the uh, have the rubber match between Cena and Styles, which is fine as well. Now, going into it, if you have Styles uh, win, Styles is going to win, and Ambrose beat Ziggler as well. Um, this is the next potential match because those are the two next top guys in on SmackDown. Wyatt is busy with Orton. The next two top guys are Styles and Dean Ambrose to fight together. Assuming Ambrose walks out of SummerSlam still the champion, there are still a few options left for his next possible feud and none other than Styles. He deserves it. He needs it. World title, why not? Styles, uh, Styles has established himself as SmackDown's number one heel, and with John Cena rumored to potentially be missing backlash to SmackDown brand in September pay-per-view, it appears that Styles should be without a f should, could be without a feud after SummerSlam. That's why Ambrose comes in this. As for or as for Bray Wyatt, so what's next for Orton? Well, there's really no telling what Bray Wyatt should await him. Wyatt has found himself involved in the feud between Ambrose and Ziggler, but he's really just a third wheel in the angle and doesn't have an actual rivalry himself. He's just a third wheel. He's just trying to, I guess, build it up more as well. Um, he's not going to interfere because at this point it's way too obvious. Way too obvious if that happens. I don't think it's going to happen at all. Um, Orton and Wyatt seems like it, uh, it could be another SmackDown major feud. Styles and Ambrose could be another SmackDown major feud. What I am really concerned about is how is WWE going to keep this in the long term? Because, you know, there there isn't that many guys that can keep one year. You know, like, how, mu how much are you going to have, just like the women's division and the tag team division, how long are you going to keep this up until it all gets watered down? You know, there's not enough people to keep this up, and that's why I'm still afraid for SmackDown. Hopefully this doesn't die down, and hopefully they do bring in, trade some people on from Raw to SmackDown, and keep it like that, and maybe by the end of this year, put up, uh, bring some other guys from NXT up by the end of next, or by the end of this year to next year, because that could really help Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, just as they're going to SummerSlam, but even if we're looking after SummerSlam, because SummerSlam's a packed card. We want to see after SummerSlam, how are the exclusive SmackDown and Raw pay-per-views going to work? How are they going to work? Who's going to be on which brand? And, you know, who's going to win the title? And what feuds are going to be created after this? So looking forward to tonight's Raw. Looking forward to tomorrow night's SmackDown. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for the so-called pre-show Monday Night Raw and so-called some of the rumors and issues that are happening around um, WWE. Make sure you tune in to Monday Night Raw tonight. It'll be a Monday Night Raw that you should not miss since it is right before SummerSlam. It only makes sense you watch it, understand it, what is the last bit of build, last bit of hype before SummerSlam, before these matches. Again, Lesnar and Orton should be headlining. Wyatt is, should be infer interfering in between some of the matches, one of the matches of that night. Possibly the Ballard Club. We'll exactly have to see. We'll exactly have to see how um, WWE does this. How they trade people on SmackDown and Raw, and what titles are going to uh, include and not include. Just after SummerSlam, after SummerSlam is over, over, everything is going to fall into place because we're going to have our very first exclusive SmackDown and Raw pay per view. That's when the games really begin and really do for SmackDown and Raw. As of now, SummerSlam is looking stacked. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn looking stacked. It should be an amazing week of wrestling. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Cruiserweight Classic, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, SummerSlam, and we go back to next week again. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning into this video, this podcast. I will make another video for tomorrow, and we'll be talking about everything that happened on Raw and what's going to be happening on SmackDown tomorrow night. Thank you very much, guys.